And so testosterone is like a weapon. Testosterone, that's why it's such an attack on testosterone in our culture. Testosterone is like a weapon in a man and it gives him, it gives him strength. It gives him might. It gives him fortitude. It gives him virility. Yo, Elliot. Yo, Elliot, got a question for you regarding effeminacy and combating the temptations of demons. You shared a quote from St. Thomas Aquinas where he defined effeminacy as something akin to an aversion to pain and attachment to pleasure. What strategies would you employ to combat the demon of effeminacy? NoFap has been very helpful, and now I'm trying to establish a consistent morning routine that sets me up to dominate the day. Thank you for all you do. And so... When St. Thomas Aquinas speaks in terms of the aversion to pain and the attachment to pleasure, it kind of echoes the initiation process that cross-culturally has been present in all civilizations, and uh, especially civilizations that recognize that they need to make very good use, very good active use of the men, the young men in their societies. Um, today, it's, we're allowed to be useless, Right. Uh, most many of us are useless and there's no initiation process to make us useful. And when I say useful, I mean, in, in a very masculine way, you know, being a useful man, right? Not just a useful person, but somebody who carries a sense of uh, purpose, meaning, mission, dignity uh, into their world. And so that movement is, an, is a movement away from, and this is the pattern that we see cross culture is a movement away from the world of the mother and an atonement with the world of the father. And that there are elements that are associated with that. The world of the mother is associated with pleasure. It's associated with comfort. It's associated with, with material creature comforts, right? Things that feel good, like masturbating, right? Masturbation, overeating, playing video games, things of this nature that sort of uh, drain our energy and keep us trapped as little boys. Even, you know, I think I think the guys that are like into the pickup, right? You know, chasing women, uh, using dating apps. I think that's I think that's just chasing pleasure. I think it's just a feminacy. It and it and sex in particular is not just a form of pleasure and entertainment. It becomes a sense of pride too. So it really, is a slippery slope when and and. Um, it's a little different than pornography and beating off because there's a sense of shame and guilt afterwards. But then, you know, you can get very good at, at laying down these 304s, right? And uh, and that could lead to a sense of pride. And that, and pride is fueled, effeminacy is fueled by pride, right? It just, it just keeps us trapped. So this movement is away from all the things that are pleasurable and a movement into the world of the father and the world of pattern is the world of, of challenge is the world was it's the, it's the world of struggle, uh, austerity, um, breakdown ultimately so that there can be a build up in meaning in purpose in vision and uh, dignity in your life. And so what I'm, what I'm calling for here, is for men to recognize this pattern. And I think that we have to initiate ourselves in a world where there's, uh, there are no old initiators. There's no reason to initiate. There's no true liminal space in our society. Everything is prof everything's profane. Nothing really actually means anything. And so uh, rites of passage, initiation for men, uh, even, if, even if we do, uh, you know, you go to something that, that promotes that, or you, you know, you have an experience. Um, unless everybody recognizes it, it does. It does. It only means something to you, which is which is unfortunate, because then there's really no uh, there's no there's no celebration. There's no there's no there's no sense of renewal in your community because people reflect or respond to you differently because they know you've been initiated. Right? These are all amazing things that would be available to us, you know, if, if we still had this practice, but because we're so topsy turvy and we're so um, chaotic in our, ver in our values and, and nobody believes the same things, it's very hard to do unless you're part of a community. So anyway, you ask me, uh, what strategies would you employ to combat the demon of effeminacy? First, it's that movement away from the mother. To combat that demon means to mortify the flesh. It means to break yourself of all various addictions, all various pleasures, um, you know, I, I, what comes to mind as I say that is Cole Robinson, check out Cole Robinson, the snake, snake diet wizard. 
right? He's big into fasting. He's huge into fasting. Fasting is one of the best ways to start breaking yourself from from all forms of effeminacy because food is, is usually our most uh, insidious addiction. But I was thinking of Cole because he also doesn't sleep on a bed, right? <laughs> he sleeps on a yoga mat. And I'm not even there yet. I don't even think I want to get there. But my point is that he's willing to challenge himself and by doing so, setting aside pleasure. You got to learn how to set aside pleasure. You got to break yourself off from, from pleasure. And then that's not good enough. And that's usually where most people stop. A lot of times, like right now, I think dopamine detoxes are great. Dopamine detoxes are, you know, I guess they're, they're, they're trending. Like people are doing them and, and for right reason, they're good. They should be done because we have way too much that keeps us trapped in that that chemical response, that high. That's good. And it's also good that we challenge ourselves, right? That's why, you know, lifting in the gym is a good idea. Challenging yourself, doing, doing things that are hard, right? Like maybe learning a craft, learning a skill, um, you know, doing, doing sports, you know, running triathlons, just doing something that requires you to be disciplined, that requires you to have commitment, that requires you to to get uncomfortable in order to reach that goal, right? Like let's say you 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 set a goal of like a 700 pound deadlift. All that's good. So these are these are two parts of a three part process. The first part is to break your addiction to material, to mama, to pleasure. Challenge yourself. And this is really in the, in the initiation process. This is kind of like the rites of passage where the men, the older men would break down the younger boy by giving him something tough to do. For example, my brother did a Native American Sundance, which is a which is a, um, a, a rites of passage initiation process that he did when he, he was in college. And one of the things they had him do is they put him up on the top of a mountain somewhere right up on a cliff. They found a rock for him to sit on, drew a circle around it and said, sit there and don't move. He had to sit there and stay in that circle for four days. They call it a vision quest. And he didn't, he couldn't eat, he couldn't drink, and he's sitting in the hot sun, right? So it's like something tough to like just break you down, to break your will, right? To break your will. But that's not good enough. Like I said, it's a three three part process. There's a movement away, there's a breakdown of the old ego, but then there has to be a recalibration. There needs to be a reconstruction of a new ego, a new way. And this is where in these societies, men would, the older men would instill value through religion, through mythology, through stories. Um, this is where tradition would be instilled. And that way the young man um, not only recognizes himself because when you get broken down and then you, you, know, you overcome it, you could still go back and be effeminate because you because you start feeling proud about yourself, right? Oh, look at me. I'm a tough guy. I did this and nobody else could do it. Or I overcame this. But it needs to be, and, and that, I just want to take note that this typically happens at a time when testosterone starts ri rising in a young man's body. And so testosterone is like a weapon. Testosterone, that's why there's such an attack on testosterone in our culture. Testosterone is like a weapon in a man and it gives him it gives him strength, it gives him might, it gives him fortitude, it gives him virility. That needs to be that needs to be pointed in the right direction. And it and and for that to be pointed in the right direction, it has to be a sense of transcendent meaning, bigger picture. There, there needs to be a sense of eternity. Right. That you're living for the dignity of your father and your grandfather and your father's father. You see what I'm saying? For all the men that came before you that that lived the journey of life the way you're about to do it. And that's hard today. That's hard today because uh, life changes so quickly. You know, the quote unquote progress means that, you know, you have very you have much less in common with your father than he had with his father and so on and so forth. So we can't even like agree on the same on the same values. So you have to find, and this is why I've been attracted to religion my whole life. I've always been attracted to religion. And as I've gotten older, I've gotten more conservative. And that's why I become Catholic because I want, I want to have a sense of eternity so that the things that I do go beyond this life. So that, because life starts to catch up on you as well, right? Like I'm middle age. I'm, I'm going to be 42 next week. Actually, Saturday when we 42. So you start having a bigger picture perspective on life, right? And so when you have this, uh, when you have 
the consideration for an afterlife, when you, can, when you have the consideration for the state of your soul, when you have the consideration of, um, of, of, of the, the, the Orthodox like to call it deification, right? The, per, the perspective of actually becoming your most saintly self, becoming your perfect you, right? New Agers would call it your, your Christed self, right? This is, this is a narrow path. And it gives you, a, it, when you walk on a narrow path, right, all the mythology that the, 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 that the young men would learn or the religion that they would learn, they would always offer a man a, a narrow path. Of course, today it's the wide path. Everything's about the wide path. Remember we spoke earlier about do what you want, do whatever you want. You could just zigzag, wiggle, woggle, and go back and forth down any path you want. Nobody really even cares because nobody cares, right? There's no sense of tradition. But when you do choose to impress it upon yourself, when you do choose the narrow path, your life starts to become molded by mortification. You start rejecting all things that would let you fall back into effeminacy, right? To walk that narrow path, there's no room for effeminacy. There's only room for being righteous, being rigid, being on that tight rope. And there's no, there's no time to slip. Tight, life goes by very quick. I think about so many of the years that I wasted slipping, walking, walking zigzag, right? It's good to choose. It's good to choose a path. It's good to choose something. And I'm talking about, I'm talking about the eternal path. I'm talking about the divine path. I'm talking about religion. It's good to choose something that provides boundaries for you, a, a life of challenge for you, but, a, but also gives a sense of meaning to your suffering and to your challenges and your sacrifices. So that's it, man. I think if we walk that way, effeminacy is, would just fall away. It's a breaking down of the old man, the old boy, the old material mommy comforts, a challenge that shows you what kind of grit you got, and then a sense of meaning, a sense of purpose, a sense of divine eternity. And I don't think we can go wrong if we live that way. So I hope that helps, dude. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from the coaching sessions that I have every week with my King Transformation students, where among other things, we get together for about four or five hours a week. We talk all things related to becoming kings in our lives, in fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you want to join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word king, K-I-N-G. Me and my team will get back to the details and see if you qualify to join us. Hope to see you at our next meeting. Done.